Thanks for joining me on this tutorial of harmonics of pipes. I'd like to go ahead and start with a demo that you may have seen in class already on uh, the harmonics of strings because it'll help us to understand how pipes uh, vibrate as well. In this case right here, this highlighted region here, kind of this blue area, represents a string. We'll call it of length L, this, this long right here. And the question is, is what sort of vibration pattern can we get on that string if we pluck it? So this would be an example of a guitar string or maybe a piano string. Well, you can see this condition for a string is that they are fixed at both ends. You'd have pegs on an actual instrument here uh, at these two locations. And you see that this waveform, as I have it right here, would not work because this implies it would be vibrating with a certain amplitude right here, and it can't have any amplitude at this point right here. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to change the shape of the wave to get it so that it fits onto the string. And you can see the first time in which the string fits on the string with zero amplitude at this fixed point at the end is this shape right here. We call these fixed points here nodes, where there is no amplitude even as the thing is vibrating. Now this is, of course, a fixed picture. If I actually struck the string, it would be vibrating back and forth and back and forth, almost like this kind of a shape. But in this case right here, you can kind of see this is the first form of a wave that would fit. Now with this wave right here, notice that this is only half of the full cycle. The full cycle is way over here. So if we wanted to represent the length of this wave in terms of this length right here, you can see here that the very first pattern that fits onto the string has a wavelength of 2L, twice the length of the string. Now we can ask the question, what's the next waveform that fits on the string? And you can kind of see here that this does not fit still because we do not have a node here where my fixed end of my string is located. So I'd have to still adjust, keep adjusting here until I got some sort of a shape that looked like this. So now you can kind of see my two fixed ends both have nodes again. But now notice that I have one full cycle, exactly one cycle of the sine wave is on the string, and therefore the wavelength would be L, or the length of the string. This is the second waveform that fits on the string. Some kind it's called the second harmonic. And I can kind of keep you can kind of see the pattern now is one of these patterns where I can just kind of keep on doing this. And you can see the next one that would fit on here would be right at that location right here. And then you say how much, where's my full wavelength would be here, right like this. So you notice, look at that, that's two thirds of the length of the string. What that allows us to do is to kind of generalize and kind of look at this pattern that you should have reviewed in class that looks a little something like this. This is the pattern for the wavelengths, the first, the second, and the third wavelength that fit on a stringed instrument. So in other words, where you have fixed nodes at each end. Um, they, it'll vibrate at 2L, uh, twice the length, the length, two thirds the length. And there's a mathematical pattern that goes along with that uh, demonstration right there. Okay, so that's what we talked about string harmonics. When we go on to start talking about uh, pipe dynamics, the harmonics of pipe, we have to change things up a little bit. And so the way a pipe works is this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on here, similarly as we did for the string, but in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this big blue shaded region is a pipe that is open at both ends. So you can imagine a musical instrument, let's say a pipe organ or something like that, some big fat pipe. It's open at this end, and it's open at this end. Now, the weird thing about um, reflections uh, regarding pipes is you get a reflection off of a pipe, not at a closed or a fixed end like you do at a string, but you get a reflection off an open end. Now, the, uh, the open, you get reflections off open ends. Now, you can think of this like this, is if you have ever been in a tunnel, uh, let's say a long tunnel, you know that you can get an echo from the far end of the tunnel. It's not off the side walls that you're getting the echo. You're actually getting the echo off of the open end of the tunnel. 
So you do get reflections off of open ends. So in this case, if you get a reflection off of open ends, Notice on this pipe, the open the uh, wave has to be at an anti-node to get that reflection. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the exact same uh, steps to see which is the first form of the wave that will fit open end at each end of the pipe. And you can kind of see here as I cycle through here, we would get something like this would be the first time in which I have an anti-node at this open end of the pipe and an anti-node at this end of the pipe. And that is the very first time that I can get uh, reflections off both ends of my open pipe. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. This is sometimes hard to visualize because we're kind of halfway through the wave. But if you look at this, notice now this pattern here. I've gone to peak, to trough. My next peak is way over here, over on this at this location right over here. Well, that's telling us is if this length of my pipe is L, the first waveform that fits has a wavelength of 2L. And you should notice that that was the exact same uh, exact same uh, relationship that we had for a stringed instrument. It's just that the pipe that is open at both ends has antinodes instead of nodes at each of the ends. We can continue uh, looking at this and say, what is the next time I can have an antinode? In other words, a maximum displacement of my wave at both ends of the pipe. And we get something like this. And so you can see here, I'll go through the cycle. It looks a little something like this. I'm at a peak, trough, peak. That's one full wavelength. And that wavelength matches the length of my pipe. And so therefore my second harmonic or my second wavelength that fits in here is equal to L. And then continuing on in the same way, you can see the next one that's gonna fit in here is magically going to line up right there, which is this is one full wavelength, and that is two thirds of the length of the pipe. And so in this case right here, what we can say is that the pattern for a pipe that is open at both ends has exactly the same mathematical pattern for each of the harmonics, the first, second, third harmonic, associated with the pipe. All right, so that all so far has been pretty straightforward and directly uh, relates to a stringed instrument. Now, the difference with pipes uh, is this. With a pipe, you can have a different condition. And so let me go ahead and I'm gonna run my wave out again so that I can set up a new condition. I'm going to keep on running around here. Okay, so the uh, new condition is looks a little something like this. Let me reset this also. There we go. The new condition is this, is that um, some piped instruments um, are not open at both ends. They are closed at one end and open at the other end. And that adds the complication to piped instruments. We have to add a different format. We'll see here that, that the type of waves that will fit into this new format have a little different prop. They have different properties and a different mathematical uh, features. So the way this works is this. So a piped instrument that has is closed at one end and open at the other is an example like a trumpet is a good example because you are physically, you have your mouth pursed at one end, right? of the mouthpiece, that's a closed end of a pipe, but the other end of the pipe is open. And the way the, uh, the way the wave patterns fit into that wave to cause the resonance that you hear with the sound is a closed end of the pipe. And so we are going to consider this end of the pipe closed now for a, um, the wave pattern has to be at a node, kind of like a stringed instrument. So a closed end of a pipe reflects like a fixed end of a string. 
Now the other end of the pipe is open, and so we have that same restriction that the open end, to get a reflection off of the open end, you need to have an antinode. So our condition for pipes that are closed at one end and open at the other end is node, antinode. And now we take a look at what is the first pattern where we can get that um, pattern to fit, and it looks a little something like this. Now, notice that this is a little bit different now because we have node, we have antinode. This is the first form that fits into our pipe, but notice that this right here, if I continue this wave on, this is only half of a wavelength even here. I'd have to continue out even further, something like this. So notice in this case, it would take four lengths of my pipe. In other words, length one, length two, two more of them to get one full wavelength for this pipe that's closed at one end. In other words, the first wavelength will be 4L. When is the next time that I can fit this pipe in where I have a node here and an anti-node here? What I can do is go ahead and continue on here. Notice that this pattern does not work because if this end of the pipe is open, which is the condition that we condition that we set, this has to be an anti-node. So I have to continue past that right there to get to this next form right here. And now notice in this case right here, what I have is I've got this uh, pattern that gives us, here is a, we're, we're starting at the equilibrium point right here, now going down. And now notice I'm not back up to my equilibrium point right here. And so we have this, this next pattern. The full wavelength is not until we get over to here. So we have, again, some fraction. The way these, the pattern works out for the tubes that are open at one end and closed at the other end looks a little something like this. And so let me just highlight this one last time so you can kind of see the uh, pipe format. Using the same reasoning, we get a pattern that looks a little something like this. The first wavelength was 4L. This one is 4 thirds L to get our first wavelength. In other words, this is 4 thirds of the original length of the uh, tube itself, and then 4 fifths for the next one. We'll talk about this mathematical pattern and how you can actually calculate it. But in this case, for the AP exam, you're not given these equations anyway, so you have to really just understand how to do this fitting of the curves, fitting of these sine waves into the tubes the way I've demonstrated. And that's the basic idea of how, to, to, uh, how um, the harmonics work for piped instruments. Thank you very much for joining me.